Uh, for me, uh, the strongest challenge that this I would say I had is, or, or I'll phrase it like this, you don't know what you don't know, right? Coming out of high school. And I went to a high school where I would say it's a pretty good high school, but I don't think they really told me what options were available as careers uh, when I was coming out of high school. So um, it's not until I was actually midway through college, almost done with college, that I started realizing like, oh, okay, uh, somebody can go into the medical field but not necessarily have to be a doctor, right? I, somebody could um, go into business, like just specific careers that were out there that I wasn't privy to, even let's say some careers that were out there that didn't require a four-year degree, right? That you can go to maybe a trade school or what have you. And I think that a lot of people that I know um, and include myself, I, we struggled somewhat transitioning to college just because we didn't know what options were out there. I would say that my advice would be to play to your strengths, right? Um, which I think is somewhat uh, some of the other uh, panelists were saying because like anybody that likes sports, you know, if a, if a team, if you're strong with the run, then you go with the run. You know what I'm saying? If you've got a strong passing game, you go with the strong passing game. If you like, you go with what your strengths are. Why? Because that's where you find the most success. That's where you'll be able to chisel it out, um, you know, the success that you need. And for me, the challenge that I had was that I was, my father told me, and he meant well, right? <laughs> Dad means well. And your parents all mean well, but your parents are tell, giving you advice based off of their experiences. And one of the challenges that I had, my father was like, yo, go into computer information systems. I'm like, okay, I'll try because dad said so. Um, then he's like, well, try business. And, he, and I did all of these things. Finally, my third year, I was like, yo, let me go with political science because I was always good with like social studies in high school. This Even though you shouted me out for political production. science, what I would do, knowing who I am now and knowing like just the way I work, just what I love to do, the, the kind of like topics that I like to discuss, I would probably go with psychology. You know, that if I could do it all over again, that's what I would do. So, um, you know, I think it's very important to figure out what your strengths are now, like what topics hit you the most now, what do you love to talk about, etc. And that'll help you to kind of find what major you should probably be in. Yep, I mean, I think that they said it all. Um, but I would, I'm the student who didn't take advantage of any of the resources that I had, even though some of them were like put straight in front of my face. Um, I used to be a part of a program I remember, remember when I first started college called C-STEP and I didn't even understand the wealth of knowledge and the wealth of like just um, the network that I was a part of. I never took advantage of it and so I think the mentoring thing is is something to take very seriously. Why? Because some of y'all in here probably have like, some of y'all might have like a two point something GPA when you know you could probably have a close to a 4.0. And all you have to do is just find another student on campus who's willing to connect with you and help you to get closer to the 4.0. And it's as simple as that. And they'll help you to do that for free. Or maybe you can buy them lunch or something like that, right? But mm -hmm. there's like, I wish I could go back and do college, um, undergrad all over again, because I would be a beast. I know that I would be a beast. Why? Because like you can literally everything you need is right around you. They're kind of handing, handing it to you right in front of your face. You just got to go get it. Go to the career services. You're, you're probably, the, probably the most important resource you have is your teacher. Make your professor earn the dollar that you are paying to the school, right? Contact them all that you need to. Tell them, listen, I don't get this. Go to every single office hour that they have. Annoy them. I guarantee you, even if you annoy them, and they feel like you're not getting the grades that you should, they, they might pass you just because they just want to get rid of you and don't have, want to have to deal with you again, right? So, like, use every single resource that is in front of you. I'm telling you, it's there for your help. Mm, changing my college experience. Um, two things I would change, or, or maybe I would change how I, how I do this. I was very active in college in terms of being a, part, being a part of like different clubs or what have you, or just like connecting to different people, but I wasn't intentional about doing it like with a purpose that would carry me further professionally, right? So it was just a social thing. And if I did college all over again, I, I would do exactly what I was telling y'all to do. Who in the classroom has close to the 4.0? Let me find that person and let me connect with them. But not just that, who do I see actually going past just doing work inside the classroom? Who seems to be getting like good internships? Who seems to be working good jobs? Who seems to be um, making a name for themselves? With, even if it's just in a small way in the industry that they want to be in, why? And in the, sorry, in the industry that I want to be in, because 
one thing that I'm, I've been kind of seeing here in the 21st century is that most people get their jobs based on the connections that they have, right? I know so many people who, whether they're qualified or not, they'll apply for a job, can't get the job, but then they know somebody over here and they're able to land jobs that don't even have anything to do with what they studied in school, but simply because they, they made the network connection with that person, they're able to land a job. And so one thing I didn't take advantage of, and I think most people don't take advantage of while they're in college, is networking with other people right there in the school who are going to be doing some major things once y'all graduate, and you can be connected to that person. That person might be the person that gets you the job that you need. Also, I, oh, one other thing I probably would do from this age, because you kind of have a chance now to experiment without the consequences being too high, um, is, is thinking about how do you turn protection. the information that you're receiving into a business. Like, if you can start something of your own, and con that's another reason why I say to connect with other people, because if you can connect, connect with other people and start your own company, potentially, then... Um, you know, then you also now give yourself other options aside from just waiting for somebody to employ you. Because we, as we've seen the past couple of years, like there are periods of time where employment becomes a challenge. But if you can create and figure out how to create money and wealth and, and, uh, and um, um, opportunities for yourself without having to worry about somebody employing you, then you'll still be able to eat at the end of the day, provide for your family and all that. Yeah, I would say um, college is a tool college in essence is a platform from which to launch um, in high school I was all American in track and field and one of the things that we used to use were blocks you know if anybody who's run track and field and um, one of the things that the blocks helps you do it helps you to start well right it helps you to have a stronger start because you have something to push off of and like it, it makes no sense to have the tool if you're not going to use it properly you know, so it makes no sense to have the tool if you're not going to really use it to launch yourself. And so my advice would be for you all to, um, one of my mentors would say like this way, master the level that you're at. Um, because if you can practice mastering this level when there's not as much at stake, then at, when you get to the next level, you'll be fine. So for instance, um, I, whether you like the Cavs or not, you know, or whether you like Golden State Warriors or not, um, although the Golden State Warriors set a record for regular season wins, once it came time for them to go to the next level, you know, they did a couple of things, but then once it came to the finals, they didn't get it done. And um, at the end of the day, when you step from college into what we term the real world, like nobody cares like this what you're going through or what have you. Well, they might care about it personally, but as far as business decisions, unfortunately, they tend not to care as much. So either you're getting learning how to get things done now to prepare you to get things done later on, or Life is going to be quite harsh uh, to you. And I've learned some of those things myself uh, personally. So I'm not speaking to you all from just like um, out of the abstract. I want you all to succeed. I want to see you all succeed. I want to see you all, um, you know, make it. Like, like, like it's, it's, it feels good when you're able to say that I can take care of my family and not worry about the bills that are coming in because you can pay your bills. You know what I'm saying? Something as simple as that. So you don't want to be in a position to where day after day, week after week, you're, you're wondering, is my family going to be taken care of? You know, if some of you all have kids, are your kids going to be able to eat? You know, um, um, for some of the fellas in here, are you going to be able to provide for your wife? You know, for some of the ladies in here, are you going to be able to provide for your husband? Um, like, all of these things are things that you start to think about as you get older and older. So don't just think about the here and now. Also make sure that you're thinking about what, what does here and now mean for my future. Yep, and I think that, in my opinion, what all of you all are saying is, it's important to do a self-assessment, I think, um, at this stage in, in the game. Um, and this is one of the things I challenge anybody I really come in contact with is, you know, figuring out what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your likes, what are your dislikes, what are you passionate about, what can you not stand, um, you know, all of those things will help you to know who you are and then understand what field you should be in. So, you know, for me, I'm pro it, people ask me all the time, like, yo, okay, what do you do? And I'm like, it's hard for me to put it in, like, like I can't give you one term, you know, um, I'm a pastor, a um, but I'm also a, a social advocate, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an author. Uh, there's so many different things that I do um, in order to, in essence, make money or to survive. And the reason why, 
I, can, I guess I can use the term pastor or being a pastor makes sense and all the other things I do make sense because I just genuinely care about people. That's why I said I would go into psychology if I were to do it all, all over again, uh, specifically counseling psychology, because like, I, like when I'm speaking to somebody, I care about who they are. You know, I care about what's affecting them. I care about helping them however I can. Um, and so everything that I kind of do is tied into that. I didn't know that about myself. Like, I didn't know that when I was like seven years old and other little kids would come up to me like, like sad and I would try to counsel them that, that you know, that, that that was something that was just a passion of mine, just helping people. Um, so I would probably go into psychology if I wouldn't do it again. But being a pastor still puts me in a situation where I'm always doing that for people. So, um, you know, I, the brand that I, that I developed, I would say, I would, I'll give y'all that phrase. And so average is failure. And, you know, my question to y'all would be, you know, what would your life look like or what would your family's life look like if you gave it all that you had? You know, um, you know, because so, like if we're real about what's happening inside this classroom right now, even though, you know, most of you all may not be speaking or what have you, but some of y'all are coming from some uh, situations that may not be the greatest or what have you. Some of y'all are worried about, you know, um, what your family situations are going to be like, uh, what kind of influence, what kind of impact could you have? If you, while you were here for these four years, five years, hopefully not six years, um, but, but what kind of impact could you have on your communities? What kind of impact could you have on your family? Um, what kind of life could you live this if you didn't settle for being average, but you really gave these four years all that you had? Uh, for me, I would say I went through my whole undergrad experience not knowing what I wanted to do. Um, literally from beginning to end, I didn't know, the, the, like the challenge with a major like political science is that most jobs in the, that a political scientist might go into aren't labeled political science. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so it, 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 if, if you don't like go into it knowing like I want to come out doing this, then you feel lost even while you're doing the major. And that's why it's good to connect to your, your teachers, your professors or what have you, because they'll, they can tell you how this can be applied in the real world and what kind of job you, sh you should go after. But I would say this, I think it's so crucial to just make sure, even if you're not sure of what you wanna do, yo, get good grades in every single class. Why? Because at least if you don't know what you wanna do and you graduate with good grades, you give yourself the option now to, like some, an employer will look at your, um, your grades and say, okay, at least I know that this, this is somebody who puts in the work. This person is gonna go and at least I can teach them how to do the job that I need them to do. But then on top of that, you have a second chance to learn more about what you want to do by going to grad school, right? But it's going to be hard for you to get into a decent grad school if you're not making the grades in undergrad that you need in order to get into a decent grad school. So that's why I say, I say grad school can be the second, choice, the, the, um, the second chance for you to figure out what you want to do, but you still have to make sure that you're getting good grades in undergrad, even if you feel lost. Uh, for, for me, uh, absolutely. Uh, and I'll, I'll turn... Let's term it just socializing in general, right? Because sometimes socializing may not necessarily be specifically a party, but I mean, okay. So if we keep it real, especially my first year or, and my second year, this is <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like y y y there were times because now you don't have that accountability. Like, when, you're in, when you're in high school, when you're in junior high school, when you're in elementary school, you have the accountability of your t teachers in your classroom. I went to Stony Brook University um, in New York where when you went there, they could care, my, my professors could care less whether or not you showed up to class, right? So there were times when I showed up to class and we were all of a sudden having a midterm. Even though I had missed most of the first half of the semester, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking like, oh, well, I got through, see, this, I don't want you to be fooled, right? So when you're in high school, if you form good relationships with your teachers, you can pretty much make sure that you're gonna graduate and you'll be okay. But your professors could care less in college, right? Like, they, well, you, you care. Exactly. So if you miss a half, they, they don't mind if you miss half of the semester of class. And I think you can, like, you can have a lot of fun in college. And it, but if you do what you're supposed to in college and maybe mitigate some of the fun that you're having, trust me, you'll be able to have way more fun later on without having to worry about your budget. Right. 
So there are a lot of people now who they could care less. They can have all the fun that they want. Why? Because they're making the money that they need to be making in order to have real types of fun. And they don't have to worry about whether or not it's in the bank account for them to have fun. Right. Whereas now you're like trying to scrap pennies or what have you together in order to have fun. <laughs> you know, um, so you can have a lot more fun if you do what you're supposed to now. So and that's another thing, thinking long term. Right. So um, delayed gratification, so to speak. Um, don't get caught up in immediate gratification. Delay the gratification somewhat and I, the results will be better in the end. That's where the network comes in. Yeah. You know, the different levels of the network, or whether you're talking about an, an older student uh, who's maybe been through some of the classes that you're trying to this take, who can mentor you through it. Um, or maybe mentor, maybe it's not um, an academic mentor that you need, but maybe you just need like a life mentor. Like, you know, somebody just keep you encouraged about life in general, because I know that you can have some of those moments in college. Um, but staying connected to your teacher, your professors, uh, they can tell you kind of what it is that they're expecting from you in detail. Um, and, and like you said, if, if, if you're connecting with your professor, then your professor kind of gets to know who you are. They might give you some grace simply because they, they kind of got, they've gotten to know you more than just um, a student that just that shows up to class, but as the person, you know, the, the full makeup of who you are. Um, but I don't know, for me, I always feel like I can do something. Usually for me, the, prop, the, 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 the thing that I usually have to do is figure out what will I have to sacrifice in order to make that thing happen. Um, you know, and that's really the challenge that I had. When I didn't have the success that I wanted in undergrad, it's because I wasn't willing to make the necessary sacrifices that it would require of me, whether that mean, meant um, letting some friends go or cutting down on some of the social um, activities that I was a part of. I wasn't willing to let some of those things go, and so I didn't see some of the results that I wanted to see academically. But I, it, 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 it wasn't that it was impossible for me to. I just wasn't willing to make the sacrifice. And so maybe just think about what needs to be sacrificed um, you know, in order for you to see the results that you would like to.